Hey guys, Dragon Sheep here, and today I'm going to be looking through the new Dragon Guidebook and pointing out anything I think is interesting or funny. Starting off with the fact that I never noticed how weird the mascot cover dragon looked when it's not a silhouette. I'm naming him Fred. Starflight, our head librarian and archivist of the Jade Mountain Academy, is launching an outreach exposition to every tribe. Yes, Starflight! This is why you're my favorite. I sure hope everyone takes this seriously and acts in a professional manner. <laughs> Let's look at Mudwings. Are most Mudwings aromantic, like, as a default? That's neat. I wonder if Clay is also like this. He sort of has the vibes. Would complicate him and Peril's relationship, but I think they could make it work. Ah, the Mudwing orgies are mentioned again. I thought that was going to stay as deep lore buried on the Wings of Fire iceberg, but uh, here we are. There's a guy named Moccasin in this red egg story. I considered that as a name for this adopt, still unsold by the way, but decided it was stupid, uh, because there was no way it could be canon compliant with the word origin. Seeing this made me realize that if that were the case, we should get rid of every name that involves human language. So that's just everything. Anyway, just goes to show you shouldn't worry too much about how quote unquote canon something is in your Wings of Fire fan content and just do whatever dumb idea you want. Next up, we get the tale of a royal emergency. When Princess Copperhead comes out as a heterosexual, she tears her family apart and all their underlying disorders come to the surface. Things get even worse when the queen dies in a tragic distracted flying accident. All seems lost until they are saved when a stronger family line takes over. And the moral of this story is that mentally inferior people should never reproduce. Eugenics! See wing time! She thought Queen Coral was a brilliant writer. She was exceptionally intelligent and discerning, and her name was Blister. Everyone ships Blaze here, but we've been sleeping on Bloral! Clister? Would be a toxic ship for sure, but dang, it's interesting to think about. It's pretty canon compliant too, and it would make sense why Coral was manipulated for so long. She was blinded by lust. We got some letters between Albatross and Lagoon. They don't really give us anything extra to talk about, besides Albatross misses his wife. Anemone and Kikaju have an underrated rivalry. They hate each other so much, I love it. Rainwing time! So the rainforest has bugs that could kill a dragon? Why hasn't anyone tried an assassination with any of those? Seems like the more travelable option. Maybe not as dramatic. It's cool to see that Rainwings have a dark past as the most terrifying tribe. Python was probably wrong, but what if sunlight is actually not good for Rainwings? Interesting. Nightwing time! The legend of Comet answers the question of what happens when a Nightwing is hatched under Skyfire. I thought it would be something like being able to shut down any other Nightwing powers, like the stone, but actually they're just fine-tuned to seeing disasters. Tui might have said this before in a Q&A, but I say if it ain't written, it ain't fit in. To the official facts. Is the Prophetess some kind of dragon superhero? Don't be a snob about comics, Starflight. Shame on you. I wonder if one day some dragon urban explorers will find the Darkstalker box of shame, all overgrown in the jungle, and it would be spooky. Bone Cruncher is the best Nightwing name ever, and he wants to change it? I wonder if the rainforest and the mountain nightwings will eventually evolve into two subspecies. Fierce Teeth's report shows that at their core, nightwings are just a bunch of dramatic theater nerds. Sandwing time! Woo! Weirdling tower info! What if Burns' red mudwing egg had actually hatched? Would she raise it, waiting for it to grow bigger or to display signs of something weird? That would be an interesting character backstory. What about that one toothless mudwing with the red veins in its wings? It was mentioned in the books, but not here. Oh-ho! We finally get some info on how Scarlet got a dream visitor. This Nightwing is an absolute mad lad who ditched his tribe, stole one of their most magical artifacts, and then ate it out of spite. I'd read a winglet on him. But there goes my theory that the stuffed Nightwing was Starflight's mom, Farsight. Did they call her that because she needed glasses? I thought it made sense if she was killed in a Skywing scuffle, they would try to give her body to their ally, Burn. Also, when you mount a large creature in taxidermy, you usually remove everything but the skin and nails and then fit it over a mannequin. And that includes its digestive tract. So, how would the dream visitor still be inside? Maybe she used, like, mummification methods where she only removed select organs before drying out the body, and nightwings have, like, a throat pouch, like some birds do, and she left it in. I don't know, I'm reaching here, but it doesn't really make sense unless Byrne left it in there on purpose as, like, a joke or something. Not that I would know anything about stuffing people- I mean dragons, let's move on. They included the Burjoa drawing? All the other illustrations made sense in the context of the book up to this point, 
Who saw this? Who drew this? What do they know? How do they know? I know who the artist is, but I mean like the hypothetical dragon illustrator. You're breaking my immersion. Ice wing time! So dragons are gathering pieces of the ranking wall as little souvenirs, and we get to see the dragon alphabet for the first time. If it's a substitution of the English alphabet, that would be cool, but I don't think this is something that can really translate to anything. Whose name is a single character? Mudwings invented ice cream. Good for them. Harpy eagles don't belong in the Arctic. Skywing time! Starflight, I found a scroll about Skywing traditions, and I'm thinking about reviving the idea. The tournament or the dragonette killing? Because it seems like you were still pretty on board with that in book 8. Each competitor must find a scavenger, the most dangerous game, and bring them back to the palace, alive and unharmed. Imagine you live in the Skywing Kingdom and you just get abducted for sport and plopped down in the palace, and this is just a thing that happens sometimes. Also, aren't cunning, guile, and wit the same thing? You could just put it all under an intelligence test. It's okay. The other tribes don't care if you're nerds. Her youngest sister was exiled to one of the northern outposts at the age of three simply because her looks offended Firestorm. I wonder if Scarlet's ugly little sister is still alive out there somewhere. That might cause problems. Canyon is funny, I wish he survived. But how big was the age gap between him and Scarlet? Seems like a lot since the brothers both knew her when she was a baby. Scarlet's red wedding sounds super dramatic. It would be fun to draw. Silkwing time! I wonder why Pantala is so much more advanced in terms of education and inventions than Puria. They even have their own currency, scales, when Puria has, like, coins or a treasure trading system. Not sure what would have helped them along. Maybe more access to resources? Could be the Book of Clearsight and the fact that they didn't have wars as often until Wasp. But sometimes wars accelerate technology more than peace. Hmm. I don't know. That's not what Swordtail's wings look like. I should know. I drew them and they were very beautiful. Ooh, a honey drops recipe. She hopes a better cook could recreate them. That's gonna be me. Welcome back to Cooking with Sheepy. Be sure to ask a dragon at least as old as Luna to help you make these. Ah yes, six years old. Perfect age to be playing with fire. Because I'm so smart, I went online to find a similar recipe to what was listed here. Lemon. It has the same ingredients, just more precise measurements. I'll put it in the description in case anyone else wants to try. Got the house to myself for around 20 minutes. Should be enough time to burn it down. Demon! Demon! You think that was too much ginger? They said like a pinch. Oh yeah. I inhaled it, it was not nice. Okay, all the ingredients are in there and now I'm supposed to uh, caramelize this until it reaches the hard crack stage. I love doing hard crack. I'm going to put them in the molds and then let it cool. All right, these have been cooling for about 30 minutes now and I think it's time for a taste test. Very nice. Blending it on the ginger, um, I could smell it burning as I was cooking it. Two weeks later. This, this is the culprit. As you can see on the footage, I ran out of lemon juice halfway through, so I grabbed this container thinking it was the same thing, but it was actually lime juice. In my defense, it really looks like a lemon. Still, now that I know the problem was not my fault, I remain confident in my chef skills. And for my next recipe, I will be making the sliced scavenger liver. Hive wing time! Okay, looks like hive wings are omnivores. 
Guess I should revoke that one comment about Cricket's apple breath in my Everything Wrong with the Lost Continent video. Where are you getting apples from? There's no tree! Oh, Hivewing power experiments were happening in Bloodworm Hive before it burned down, possibly letting them escape. That's a creepy pasta premise if I've ever heard one. There's a Kraken? I thought dragons were the biggest creatures in their world, but there's actually a few things they need to be worried about getting eaten by. How do sea wings cope with living in the sea? It's horrifying down there. Leafling time! Scales are green and or brown, sometimes with hints of gold, pink, or red. Red! You see that? Red! Red Hawthorne Crimping Cannon! This leafwing book section made me wonder why this whole entire guide is in book form if Starflight is in charge and Purians have scrolls. Oh yes! A bug book! Mandrake knows where it's at. It says on the wiki he's an insect sorter. What does that job entail? Of course Cobra Lily is a true crime girl. I like that even though the sapwings and the poison wings disagree, they still have a lot of respect for each other. Or at least they used to. General Linden was killed by a gimpy gimpy sticking tree while leading young dragonettes on a safety training drill. Fun fact about the gimpy gimpy plant, the venom doesn't actually kill you. The pain is just so intense that it drives you insane to the point that it is known in Australia as the suicide plant. Early folklore talks about horses brushing up against it and then throwing themselves off cliffs. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened to Linden, but if it did, it happened in front of a group of children. Well, this ends a bit abruptly. Nice thing to leave dragons reading this with a crisis about these creatures being sentient and then peacing out. Overall, this book was fun, had some nice art, great for people looking for some extra tidbits on each tribe. As a reader, I had a good time, but if I was Starflight, I would be pretty disappointed in the world and most of the people in charge of it. This project is going to be his Joker origin, I can feel it. Starflight, what are you doing? It's not about the wind thins, sister. It's about the message. Everything burns! Oh. Special thanks to all my patrons, and tell me what you think about this book in the comments. Was it all you were hoping for, or did you want even more knowledge?